It has officially been over one year since I picked up my Tesla Model 3. And during that time, I have tried out a bunch of different Tesla accessories and mods. Some I've really liked and continued to use and others, well, I didn't. So in this video, I'm going to show you all of my accessories and mods that have made my ownership experience even better in hopes that they may do the same for you. Everything I mentioned will be linked below and all of these accessories and mods will fit the Model Y or have a Model Y variant. And if that's the case, I'll have the variant for the Model Y linked below as well. So starting with the outside, first up, my badges. I'm not sure why, but despite Tesla switching from chrome trim to black, they still have chrome emblems or badges. Now, there's a few different routes you can go for blacking out your badges. I personally did Plasti Dip. You don't need to remove anything or worry about lining anything up. It's gonna give you full coverage and won't come off randomly, and if you wanna take it off, well, you just peel it off. There's definitely this idea that Plasti Dip is super low quality, and that's just not true. As long as you take your time, do multiple coats, and make sure that you're doing it in like above 60 or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Mine's been Plasti dipped for over a year and it still looks fantastic. Now, if you have a dual motor badge, you can still Plasti dip and it will come out all right, but I would just recommend replacing it. I'll have a kit linked below where all the lettering is in an alignment tool, so you can just put the whole thing up to the car and stick, no placing it letter by letter. Also, if you're planning to remove your badges but don't know how, just grab a heat gun and some fishing line. If if you don't have that, try a hair dryer and some dental floss. That's what I used. And while I went through almost an entire thing of floss, it worked. I have my front end completely debadged, my rear T Plasti dipped, and my dual motor badge replaced. Next up is something that you probably can't see unless you're super close up to the car, my rim protectors. I recently made an entire video covering these, so I don't have too much to say that I didn't already say in that video. They are easy and straightforward to put on, provide really good coverage and protection, look practically invisible, very cheap to replace versus repairing a rim, and they're available for the Model 3 Uber turbines, Model Y Uber turbines, and Model Y induction wheels. Now, the next thing is not something I currently have on the car, but I'm about to, within the next month or so, my winter wheels. I ended up going with T-Sportline TS5 18 inches wrapped in Michelin Cross Climate 2s. I live in Kentucky where we do experience winter, but it can fluctuate hard. One day, it'll be five degrees, and the next, 60. So I don't want dedicated winter wheels that will burn up on those days or weeks at a time during just the middle of winter where we'll have crazy temp swings and it'll be like 60 degrees for like a week and a half straight and then it'll be five degrees again. However, I still want to be covered in the snow as we do get about 10 to 20 snow days here and Michelin Cross Climate 2s are three peak mountain snow rated. For anyone that might be considering them, they've been great for me. Also, as for the TS5s, they've also been great. If you're not familiar, you really only buy Tesla wheels from two places, T-Sportline or Martian wheels. I have zero affiliation with either companies, but I ended up going with T-Sportline for a few different reasons. First is the price. They're much, much cheaper than Martian wheels. And I also waited for like a Black Friday deal, so I got an even bigger discount. Yes, they are flow forged instead of forged, but even still, I got an entire set of wheels, tires, TPMS sensors, and lug caps for only a few hundred more than what just the wheels alone would have costed me from Martian wheels. Secondly, the convenience. T-Sportline offers wheel and tire packages, so your wheels show up already wrapped in the tire of your choosing, and they're plug and play as they come balanced. All you gotta do is just slap them on, you use your factory lugs, yeah. However, with that being said, every Martian Wheels owner that I've spoken to is very happy with their purchase. So it entirely depends on what you want and how much of your own time and work that you wanna put in. Next up is also something I'm about to put on because of winter, mud flaps. I normally run these year round, but I've been testing new ones for test stuff and just haven't gotten around to putting them back on. They are a very cost effective way to protect your paint if you're not going the PPF route or if you want even more protection from rock chips. And then the final exterior modification I have, and I don't really know if I'd consider this a modification, but yeah, a full frontal and side PPF. I've already gone over my thoughts on PPF in my 10,000 mile review, but in short, yes, for me, it's been worth it. It makes the car very easy to clean, which saves me time and helps me out, but it also just gives me peace of mind, knowing that my paint is protected when I inevitably hear my front end getting peppered with rocks while I'm on the interstate. However, pricing varies widely depending on location, so what I paid may be 
far less than what you're quoted and what you would pay. And at that point, it might not be worth it for you. If you're in the Louisville area, I'll have where I went and where I recommend because they did such a fantastic job, link down below. Now for the interior. The very first thing I put in my car was all weather floor mats. And I mean everywhere, driver, passenger, rear passenger, trunk, trunk well, front, back of seats, everything. Floor mats are actually what kickstarted test stuff as I had went through probably 10 plus different brands of floor mats and I just couldn't find any that I liked. So I ended up just making my own. They are minimal, no badging or big ugly logos, lightweight XPE, full coverage. And well, you all also seem to really like what I was personally looking for as we can never keep them in stock. If you actually use your car and don't just baby it, I would recommend some all weather floor mats just for the added protection. Now this next accessory is definitely in my top three. And if you've been watching the channel for a while, you probably already know what it is. It is something that once you use, you can't not go back a rotating screen mount I can't really describe how it feels other than it ruins every other model 3 or Y that doesn't have one the ability to rotate the screen towards you and slightly up and remember that the gen 2s go left right up and down or the gen 1s only go left and right is just amazing my number one disappointment with the refreshed model 3 is that they didn't add this maybe they're keeping it as a luxury only thing for the s and the X but yeah it's not hard at all to install and I've done a full how-to guide here on YouTube I I highly recommend you give one a shot. You'll see what I'm talking about. Dashboard and steering wheel swaps. This one is definitely out there and not for everyone, but for people that want customization, this is for you. For the dashboard slash door trim swaps, I'm honestly surprised Tesla never sold different options after the fact via their store. Swapping them out is very easy and it kind of reminds me of the PlayStation 5 covers in that it, they're just held on by clips. And it seems kind of intimidating at first, but once you've done it, then it's like, oh wow, this is super, super easy. Also swapping the dash and the door trims, if you end up having those, really does change up how the interior of the cabin feels. Prior to what I have now, I had a white carbon fiber dash and steering wheel for the summer, which made the cabin feel very open and summery, I guess you could say. But I have since switched to a matte carbon fiber for a more sporty feel, plus it matches the performance spoiler and I feel just brings the kind of blacked out look that I'm going for together. As for the steering wheel, it is much more than just swapping the dash, but if you're really looking for a custom wheel, I'd recommend it. I loved my custom steering wheel, however, it just doesn't match anymore. So I'm actually looking for one to match the black carbon fiber and even potentially the white seats. Now for the second thing after the floor mats that I put in the car, inserts. First is my sliding console insert. It just goes in the center console, keeps things from falling into the abyss that is the storage space. It's great. However, if you are going to get one, make sure you get a sliding one as if not, it'll be very inconvenient and it'll like get stuck and you'll kind of have to use it's yeah, it's bad. Armrest insert. Same reasoning though it gets less use. I also recommend you get one with a cutout for the plug because if you do ever need to use that plug, then you don't need to take the insert out. Cup holder insert, my favorite insert. Tesla cup holders are just slightly larger than 99% of drinks, so they end up just rattling around. Tesla also doesn't have any built-in protruding rubber to grab smaller drinks. This fixes that while also being very easy to clean if you ever have any drinks spill over. Instead of trying to clean down in the console, you can just take the cup holder insert out and just wash it out. Now this next accessory is something I always forget I have an SSD for Century slash dash cam. For my use cases, an SSD works perfectly. However, if you experience extreme climate, you may wanna look into an endurance micro SD card setup, which I've discussed in the past. I ended up going with the Samsung T7 one terabyte and I have never had to erase or format anything since putting it in the car. I've also never had any problems with it overheating or being slow. Next up is a phone mount, and a lot of people think these are stupid because, well, you have a massive center screen right there. However, if you need your phone for navigation, like Waze or something else, maybe work-related, then, well, you know that a phone mount is gonna be a must. I currently use a Magback, and while I'm still not the biggest fan of phone mounts attached to the screen, it's definitely the best one that does attach to the screen, while also being a charger. Now for something that every time I mention it, people like think I'm a criminal or something, 
uh, but I personally love my radar detector. You might notice that there's no big wire hanging down and it auto turns on and off via the weight sensor in the driver's seat whenever I get in and pressing the brake. I have a Uniden R8, gonna go out on a limb and say this is the best consumer grade radar detector you can buy right now. And it is attached to my rear view mirror via a blend mount and is hardwired into a 12 volt switch. I have an entire walkthrough video here on the channel of how I did this exactly like step by step. So if you like my setup and would like to mimic it, well, you can check that video out. If you take your time, you can get a super clean install and this thing has saved my butt so many times, it's more than paid for itself. Now, the next accessory is something that I actually just took down, but I've had up for the better part of the summer, a roof sunshade. And it does pretty much what you would expect, keeping the heat in the cabin down along with darkening the cabin slightly on those bright summer sunny days. The one I have matches the headliner, so it just blends right in. I highly recommend these, they're great, especially if you live in like a hotter climate. Editing Jeremiah here, and I ended up forgetting two pretty essential accessories. First is a screen protector. Highly recommend this. Uh, it, it does what it says it does. It protects the screen from you know dings or scratches. Maybe you have animals or kids that get up in the front. Highly recommend it. Also, you can get matte versions to help with glare, and the screen protectors have an oleophobic coating, which makes the touching and swiping experience much better. Highly recommend one. The second accessory is jack pads in case I ever need like roadside assistance and then the roadside assistance comes out and they don't have jack pad adapters because you need jack pads to jack up these cars properly without you know damaging the battery. So yeah, two very essential accessories that I did not want to leave out. Back to the video. Then the last modification for the interior and definitely what I get the most questions on my tent. Tent is very subjective and you can by all means DM me over on Twitter or technically X now with your general location and what you're wanting to achieve and I'd be able to give you a good idea, rough recommendation on what you should get. However, I may or may not have 20% all around with the full back glass. Also, I totally don't have my windshield tinted, but if I ever did, 50%. And if someone ever wanted to see what it looked like driving at night, with 50% on the windshield and maybe 50% tint on the headlights, you might just be able to look at your screen and see that it looks completely fine. Now, as for the other accessories I use, well, I just made a video on the Fantec tire inflator and portable vacuums, and I keep them in my car pretty much at all times, so I thought that I would include them here. The tire inflator reads your PSI when connected and auto shuts off when it's at your desired PSI has a big enough battery to pump up all four wheels multiple times, doubles as a flashlight and triples as a battery bank for your devices in case your car is ever dead or something and your devices are dead. Plus, I think everyone should just have a tire inflator with them at all times, just in case. Then the vacuum, while not having as much utility as the tire inflator, is very nice for its portability, power, and ease of use slash cleaning it. I used to vacuum once a month and my floors would be a wreck when I did vacuum them. But now that I have this, I just hit the floors once every like two to three days and they're much more clean. Like my car just stays a lot cleaner now. And lastly, charging accessories because well, it's an EV. As for the on the road accessories, I have a J1772 adapter along with a Karen lock. The J1772 is very handy for level two public charging like at hotels, parking garages, parks, etc. As for my Karen lock, I finally upgraded to one of the more premium ones. The premium ones are like four extra dollars over the standard ones because I've been doing a lot more on the street public charging. The J1772 came with my car, but if yours didn't, you can pick one up from Tesla and these Karen locks, you can just pick them up on Amazon. I'm surprised Tesla doesn't make Karen locks. Then my other on the road accessory is the $250 paperweight, AKA the CCS adapter. Despite me making fun of it, I'm still glad I have it just in case I ever need it. Plus with how much free charging I've gotten from Electrify America, it's more than paid for itself. They are now 175 from Tesla, so actually a little bit cheaper but you do need to make sure whether your Tesla has CCS support. And well, if it doesn't, that's another 450. At that point, I wouldn't bother with it. And even if you do have CCS support, with all of the NACS announcements and manufacturers switching over, I just don't really see the point to buy one anymore. Like maybe if you live near an Electrify America currently that has CCS, and they offer a ton of free charging, you might be able to make your money back, and then you pretty much just kind of have it for free but it's kind of just paperweight because I haven't used mine in ages. Then my home charging setup, which I have 
done a whole video on along with recommendations on what you should get based on what your needs are. But I ended up getting a NEMA 1450 installed a foot away from my panel and use the Gen 2 mobile connector with a NEMA 1450 adapter. I do not carry the mobile connector with me even though I probably should, but I guess that just goes to show how much I believe in the Tesla supercharging network or maybe just how dumb I am. But I've done full like thousand plus mile road trips without it and was just fine. This setup gets me roughly seven to eight kilowatts and will easily take me from zero to 100% overnight. But those are all of my accessories and modifications so far. I say so far because I'm always trying out new accessories and swapping them in and out of my car as well, I literally own an accessories shop, but yeah, if you have ones that you think I should try out, then drop them down below and I'll definitely give them a shot. Like I said, you can find everything linked below. And if you are new here and you wanna see more Tesla stuff in your YouTube inbox, then feel free to subscribe. I'd appreciate it. And I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.